This past week, I attended camp at Living Water Ministries located on Stony Lake in the beautiful west side of Michigan with our six Emmanuel youth. We all had a great time. They witnessed God in a different place. For some kids, it was the first time they had ever been away from home for the very first time. And they recognized God within themselves. The kids at camp did many fun and exhilarating activities like go 30 feet up on, on the high ropes and do the challenges high above the ground. They did Bible study. They swam in Stony Lake. They canoed. They went to Lake Michigan to splash in the waves on and on. God's enduring and loving presence was made, at, made known at camp this week. For all the 100-something kids this past week and hundreds more over the course of the summer, camp is perhaps the first and most powerful place so far in their young lives that they connect with God in their own terms and in their own unique ways. I'm inspired by camp ministry so much, as you all well know by now. Because it ignites a fire in these kids to connect with God. What a great time and place for me to be a pastor, to see my, see my and our own kids living out the gospel. And to be yet again reminded that the gospel doesn't just get shared within the four walls of the church, or in confirmation class, or in Sunday school but in places hours away from church and without their parents. Sorry, parents. I'm grateful that you were willing to drive your kids to camp, but your kids did great. I love camp, and I believe everyone should be able to experience that life-changing week. Turning to our gospel lesson, and indeed uh, all of our lessons for today, um, we hear Jesus give a parable to an overflowing crowd of people on the Sea of Galilee. We hear that the crowds were so full that Jesus had to go onto a boat out into the sea and preach to the masses from there. Jesus tells them that the word of God is like a sower who throws seeds indiscriminately among God's people. We hear that just like the seeds that survive or not, the word of God finds room for growth or not so much, in our hearts. The word of God is the seed, and our hearts are the soil. If our hearts are ready and primed for God's word, then it might survive and bear fruit. If our hearts aren't ready, then the word might struggle and take a little longer. And isn't that the truth? We're either ready for God's radical message of love and grace and generosity, or we're not ready for it. But there's no telling, there's no predicting how or when, how strongly God's seeds of faith will take root in the world. Or there are those times when we think we're ready and prepared, but when it comes time to walk the walk of faith and live it out, we struggle. We struggle because our hearts are set on other things, like we hear Jesus say, on things like jobs or wealth or the trappings of material possessions. I often think that a week at camp is one of the best environments for God's seeds to flourish. Over the course of this last week, I spoke with other pastors who were preparing to preach on this same text today, and one pastor made the point that the purpose of a parable is to shock or disrupt the listeners. And in some cases, it can be so extreme that the listeners reevaluate their priorities so that following Jesus would always come to the top of that list. And in this case, to shock his listeners in Matthew's gospel, in first century Palestine, Jesus uses the familiar language of agriculture. Jesus talks about a farmer indiscriminately sowing seeds. And to the shock of his listeners, they would be appalled to hear that any farmer, for any reason, would waste any of their seeds. Some get wasted while others take root. And for me, 
What stands out as the most shocking point to all this is that we can't control where God's love and life can take root, whether that's in the larger world or inside of us, in our hearts. We can't control how or when or how strongly that'll happen. That part is up to God. All we can do is try as best we can to be prepared to share it abundantly and witness faith growth when we see it, when we recognize it. I was reflecting this week on the image of the sower just taking handfuls of seed from the bag and scattering them wherever they went. They weren't just sowing seeds in the soils they knew would work, but the seer, the sower thro uh, throws the seeds in all places because the sower isn't sure what will happen with the seeds once they land. And isn't that so true with us, friends? We can't always control what life brings us. We can't always control when or where the gospel will take root in our hearts. It just sort of does it organically, on its own. And once the gospel is in there, it's there. We know. I think for many kids, the week at church camp is one of the first places and the most powerful places in their lives when God's love truly takes root within them, inside out. And those kids can't control where and when that'll happen. God just sort of appears in their life over the course of that week. And it is powerful to be there, to witness. I know that camp is one of those places where the seeds of ta uh, faith take root. And I think, for me personally, and I, I believe I can speak for my colleagues, I think churches and church leaders get so wrapped up in forcing God's love to take root in certain places, in certain environments, that we forget it's not up to us. Gosh, wouldn't it be nice, wouldn't we love it if it happened within the four walls of the church that our grandparents or great-grandparents built? Wouldn't it be great if every young family wanted to fully participate and bring their kids to church every week, where they can learn and grow, and, and it doesn't just happen at camp? Wouldn't it be great if church was full every week? Judging by the parable of the sower, God doesn't work that way, much to our own dismay. It's a shocking lesson. It's a shocking lesson to hear and to think about. As much as we might like, we can't control where the gospel will take off. But this is a good thing. This is gospel. This is good news because we hear Jesus telling us that all we need to do is focus on where God is taking root in the world and to get inspired when it happens. And friends, I have to be a little bit more candid with you today. I know that Christ's gospel will live on. That's not a question I wrestle with. I know that the kids at camp this week will want to have a relationship with God and live in Jesus' footsteps as they get older and as they have kids of their own, even as they might drift away from the church. I know the gospel will take, brute, take root and bear fruit in the world. What I'm not so sure of is that congregational churches, as we know them, will be the place where it happens the most. Or, at the bare minimum, congregations of every denomination won't look and feel like they do now in just a short time. I'm not even sure our denominations, our own Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, will, will be what we've known to be in just a few years. Things are changing, and fast. So with a bit of irony, it seems that the fertileness of the soil in many churches is running out, as some are closing doors or forcing to merge with other congregations. It's an uncomfortable thing to hear, 
It's a, it's a hard thing to grapple with. And this is both good and bad, like many things. The place where many of us have, and still today, find fertile soil for the seeds of faith to grow isn't necessarily where people in the future will come to know God. More and more people are coming to know God and grow in their faith outside of church buildings. And we have to look at it this way. Something like 95% of Jesus' ministry was conducted outside of the temple. In fact, some of his biggest enemies, his biggest rivals, were people like me, temple authorities, pastors, rabbis. The people he ministered to weren't in the temple. Sometimes, well, most of the time, they were outsiders, people like Samaritans, like prostitutes, tax collectors, or some country farm kids and fishermen, like the disciples. The seeds of Jesus' message in his own time did not flourish in the temples or with temple authorities. The seeds of Jesus' gospel caught on with unsuspecting people in faraway places, outdoors. So friends, be prepared in the years to come to hear about the most incredible faith stories outside of the institutional church and amongst populations that haven't known God before. It's a phenomena that church leaders all over, fellow pastors, professors, bishops, deacons, lay leaders, it has all of us asking, what do we know? What do we know about how God works? God shows up in mysterious ways and does incredible things where we least expect. And that's the point. Just like with kids at camp. Just when we think we have it all figured out, God shows up and overturns our expectations. So, friends, when we hear about church decline, don't be worried. Things might change. Things might look a little bit different. The gospel will survive. It just might take us by surprise when and where it happens most in the future. My prayer is that those of us who feel God in our hearts will continue to grow in faith. And those that don't know God can realize that it doesn't need to happen in a church. And I know it sounds extreme coming from a pastor. But God's love can take root anywhere. So our churches will need to be more nimble. We'll need to pay attention to and respond to where the gospel is taking root in the world. And welcome outsiders and develop ministries that we haven't seen before. And don't worry. Don't worry. I have faith because I've seen it. I've been in the middle of it. I have faith that Emmanuel will be more nimble and responsive. And you're already there. Just don't be afraid. God is doing good work in and amongst all of us. Don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid about who walks through the doors. Don't be afraid to learn and grow in new ways. When it comes to the future of the gospel, what do we know? Only God knows. All we can do is try to keep our ears and eyes open and our hearts so that we can witness that growth that God is, is bringing into the world and be a part of it. Now, please don't hear this, that you need to stop going to church. Our Emmanuel family has so much to offer anyone who walks through these doors. Emmanuel, I believe, truly is a wonderful place to experience and to come to know God. And the point of today isn't to discount what our churches have to offer. Only to say that faith growth can and does happen elsewhere. One of my favorite ELCA theologians, her name is Amy Lindman Allen, offers her words this week as she says, God is a constant, and in the fields that God has tilled, God's word will flourish. 
The good news of the parable is that even among those for whom the word is not intentionally sown, there exists the possibility and the hope of growth. Friends, I thank God every day for you, and I thank God for showing up into our lives in times and places we least expect. And next summer, I pray that more kids and adults will want to go to camp with me. Thanks be to God. Amen.